You must have observed how heritage structures like Taj Mahal, Gol Gambas, etc., constructed around three centuries ago, remain cool throughout the year. Ever wondered the amount of energy consumed by these structures to stay cool? Zero. These monumental buildings, built a couple of centuries before the application of electricity became common practice, use a threefold approach for cooling barriers, mass, drainage. These structures use barriers such as jalis and verandas to shade the structure and minimize direct solar heat gain as much as possible. The massive walls, the high plinth and domes constitute a large thermal mass that absorbs the solar heat but delays the heat transfer substantially to interiors thereby obstructing significant heat from entering into these spaces. The heat which gradually makes its way into the structure during daytime is then drained into a local water body or into the night sky by radiation. This heat rejection prevents accumulation of heat and helps maintain a consistently low temperature in the interiors. Thermal comfort is provided by cool interior surfaces that easily absorb body heat through radiation and convection processes. Most current systems provide cooling by air. However, water can be an alternative to air in a lot of applications. Let's see how air compares with water as a cooling medium. Water is approximately 800 times denser than air and has approximately 4 times the heat capacity as air. Effectively, one must circulate 3300 liters of air as opposed to 1 liter of water to absorb the same amount of heat. Sample this. To provide 100 TR worth of cooling, one would need 40,000 CFM of air compared to just 32 CFM of water. Moreover, the air-cooled system would need 6 times more power than the water-cooled system. Clearly, water is a much more potent cooling medium and cooling by water is much more efficient than cooling by air. Let's now speak about the mean radiant temperature. We all know that heat flows from a hotter body to a cooler body by principle. In any room, there is constant heat exchange between the walls, roof, floor, other objects, people, etc. The weighted average of the temperatures at which the surfaces of all such objects in a room radiate heat is the mean radiant temperature. Let's now have a look at the components involved. The slab. The slab over or under the area for which the system will be installed. Pipe grid. Polypropylene pipes are laid out on the slab to circulate water across the slab. Insulated water tank. Water is drawn from a storage tank which is insulated to make sure water stays as close to its ambient temperature as possible. Since this is a closed loop, the requirement of water is one time and not continuous. Pump. Water is pumped from the tank using pumps and allowed to flow through the pipes embedded in the slab. Heat exchange devices. Heat gained by water flowing through the pipes above the structure is ejected by using heat exchange devices like radiators or heat pipes. Working of the system. When the pump is turned on, water begins to flow through the pipes and as water slowly moves closely above the structure, it absorbs heat from the structure by virtue of a difference in temperature between the structure and water. This heat exchange prevents heat buildup in the structure and consequently, the mean radiant temperature of the room doesn't rise significantly. Water then goes back to the tank, closing the loop, and on its way back, it loses the heat gained via radiators. In spaces with higher cooling requirements, a combination of structure cooling and a conventional system may be used to achieve the desired cooling effect. When we use a regular air conditioner in a non-structure cooled room, we will need to set the air conditioner at a lower temperature to feel comfortable. This is because of the higher mean radiant temperature. Compare this with an air conditioner in a structure cooled room. Here, setting the air conditioner at a relatively higher temperature will still sufficiently comfort the occupants. Use of structure cooling along with conventional air conditioners reduces the burden of cooling and hence the energy consumption from conventional systems. Structure cooling or therm or drain is a sustainable method which addresses heat gain from the structure to improve thermal comfort conditions in occupied spaces without demanding a lot of energy.